All right, now we're going to look at the other types of problems that you are going to be faced with. The ones that say, how long will it take? So you're going to be looking for the time period it takes to get to a certain percent or to get to a certain mass. So the problem is going to give you what the uh, new percent is going to be or the final percent or the final mass is going to be. And you just have to figure out how long did it take to get there. And this type of problem really isn't that difficult. Let's look at a graph here first so you kind of understand it, and then we'll actually work out the problem. But if you think about this, it's saying, how long will it take for a 10-gram sample of strontium-90 to decay to 2.5 grams? We'll worry about this part in a minute. Now, strontium-80 has a half-life of 28.8 years. So this is the half-life. This is how long it takes for half of the sample uh, to be converted. So we start at 10. One half-life goes by right here at the 28.8 year mark. So that's one half-life. And we get from 10 down to half, down to 5. So after 28.8 years, we get to 5. And then we take half of that after another 28 years has passed. Oops, 28.8 years. So this is the second half-life. And here we are at the 57, if we want to put these together, 57.6 year mark. So 57.6 years has gone by to get us here to the second half-life, 28.8 plus 28.8. And that's half of 5, which is 2.5. So that's how we could use a graph to figure out uh, how long it takes to get to 2.5 grams. And if we want to keep going, we could answer this one. Well, 1.25 is the next value here, the next um, answer that we get when we cut 2.5 divided by 2. So 1.25 is this point right there. And that's the third half-life. So yet another 28.8 years have gone by. So if we add them all up, we end up with a grand total of 86.4 years. Three half-lives, one, two, three, or 28.8 plus 28.8 plus 28.8 is 86.4 years. So that's how we could use a graph or we could just think about it logically. Let's pretend here that we don't have the graph handy, that we just have to use some basic math. So how long will it take for a 10 gram sample of strontium to decay? So here's what you should do. Just write down 10.0 grams. You want to get all the way down to 2.5. So how many times do you have to divide it by 2 to get to that point? So 10 divided by 2 is 5, divided by 2, 2.5. And there we are. We got it. One time, two times. We had to divide it by two, two times. That means it's two half lives have to go by. Now, we want to know in years, how long will it take? The problem, I guess, should have said in years, but if we give it to you here, use it. Two half lives times one half life goes on the bottom. One half life is 28.8 years. Two times 28.8, 57.6 years. So that's how we know how long it takes to get to this point. Now, what if we keep going? What if we want to get to 1.25? We'll simply divide this in half again. 1.25, that's our third half-life. So instead of two half-lives, we have three half-lives. One half-life on the bottom. One half-life is still 28.8 years. Three times that is 86.4 years. So that's how long it would take to get down to 1.25. So these problems, the how long will it take problems, they always give you the starting and they give you the final. They give you the target. And you just have to ask yourself, how many times do I have to divide by 2 to get to that, that final point? And that tells you how many half-lives. And then if you need to, you can convert half-lives into time periods using the information given to you in the problem. All right. Imagine a smoke detector con containing americium-241 is disposed of in a landfill. That's a no-no. How long in years will it take until only 6.25% of the original sample remains? Now, if I give you percent, you always say to yourself, we must start at 100. If you're given percent, assume that you start at 100. So here we go. We want to divide by 2 and get all the way down to 6.25. That's our target. So divide by 2 gets us to 50. That's one half-life. Divide by 2 gets us to 25. That's our second half-life. Divide by 2 gets us to 12.5. That's our third half-life. Divide by 2 gets us to 6.25%. That's our fourth half-life. 
So it took four half-lives to get to 6.25. So if the question just said how long in half-lives, you would say four half-lives. But it doesn't. It says how long in years. So what do we know about a half-life for americium? Well, the half-life is 432 years. So one half-life is 432 years. Four times 432 is a lot of years. This is why we don't put them in a landfill. 1,780 or I'm sorry, 28 years, 1,728 years. That's how long it would take to get from our original sample all the way down to 6.25. We still have some americium left. We're still not even at zero. But just to get to 6.25, we're at 1,728 years. I doubt you'll still be around to see this. Now, another way we could do this, if you don't want to do this dimensional analysis stuff, is just keep track as you move along. One half-life is 432 years. Add another 432 years to get to your second one. Another 432 years and then another 432 years to get to your fourth half-life or your fourth division to finally reach this. And then just add them all up. How many years has passed? 1,728 years. So that's another way to look at it. Finally, researchers working with uranium-235 have a 12 gram sample that they need to dispose of. How many years will it take for the sample to reach less than one gram? Now the half-life uranium-235 is 7.0 times 10 to the eighth years. So a lot of time is going to go by here. So we start with 12 grams. We cut it in half, get to six. That's one half-life. Cut it in half, get to three. Two half-lives. Remember we want to keep going so we're less than one gram. Cut it in half again. 1.5. Three half-lives have passed and we're still above the one gram mark. Finally cut it in half, 0.75. That's the fourth half-life. So now we're at an acceptable level for this particular problem. We know we wanted to get under one. We are, and it took four half-lives to do it. Now we could use dimensional analysis here. Four half-lives, one half-life is 7.0 times 10 to the eighth years crazy. And if we do the math here, we end up with uh, 2.8 times 10 to the ninth years. So there's our answer. Or if we just do the math here, uh, 12 to, cut in half is 6, that's one half life, that's 7.0 times 10 to the eighth years. Divide it in half again, that's another 7.8 or 7.0 times 10 to the eighth years, another 7.0 times 10 to the eighth years, and another 7.0 times 10 to the eighth years. Add them all up, what do you get? That, seven point or 2.8 times 10 to the ninth years. So, just a quick summary here. Anytime you have these how long will it take problems, you're going to have the starting and you're going to have the ending. You're going to have the uh, beginning mass or the beginning percent, which is always a hundred. If you're not given to it, you assume that. And, you, and then you're going to have the final. What did it drop to? Here's your beginning mass. What did it drop to? You will have these two values. Then you take out your calculator and say, how many times do I need to divide by two to get to my final? How many times do I need to divide by two to get to my final mass? And however many times, those are equal to your half-lives. And then you just have to do a quick little DA, figure out what one half-life is, and say, well, if I have this many half-lives, put half-lives on the bottom, one half-life is a certain number of years or days or seconds or whatever unit you get. Do the math, and then you know how long.